All right, so, you know, yeah, so we get back after the bowl game. Um, you know, our guys and our coaches had some time off, which was really good. Um, you know, the biggest thing is we've been able to focus on getting um, our coaching positions hired, um, which has been huge for us. Um, really excited about the staff that we have that's come together so far. Still some off the field stuff that we're uh, kind of working through with some of the quality control guys, um, but some really good things shaping up. Um, you know, a big point of emphasis for me was to bring in coaches and staff that uh, that being a part of the culture, being a part of, of Louisiana football is important to them. Um, and we absolutely did that. You know, we got guys that have played here before, that have coached here, that are familiar to the area, um, that are really close to our program and have been at some point in time. And so, you know, the thing we talked about was continuing the mission, right? And I think having people here that understand that the things that we've done have been really good and significant in our program's history. Um, and they're excited to be here and build off of it. So for us, you know, that's been the big thing. Um, you know, obviously um, getting those guys here, having them here. Um, we have a team meeting tomorrow night, so it's going to be huge. Uh, cannot wait to have these guys back in the building. Um, and, you know, getting ready to, to continue, get started with the off season, and, and try to keep this thing rolling. Coach, with all of the recent activity, uh, players hitting the transfer portal, um, how has your staff, your team tried to, I guess, block out the noise of guys leaving and I guess how are you guys going to take advantage of the transfer portal yourselves? Well, you know, the thing is the transfer portal is real, right? Um, and it's something that, you know, between that and NIL, um, you're looking at, at, I guess, changes and you're looking at uh, difficulties that we haven't really had to deal with before. Um, so. Listen, this roster's healthy. You know, we've we've built this roster the right way. <clears throat> we've recruited really good kids and good players, and we have depth on this roster. Um, so, you know, as far as the staff and, and the players are concerned, I mean, you know, anytime you have change like that, you got other opportunities for people. Um, so we have a lot of guys in this team that want to be here that – that are really excited about the opportunities to do it. For us as coaches, we're excited about the opportunity and the challenges ahead. You know, um, anything worth having in life is going to be difficult. And, um, you know, some things that maybe we didn't see, but truthfully, I mean, I think it would have been naive to, for us to think that we wouldn't have anybody go in the portal. You know, I mean, with a coaching change, no matter how the guys feel about whatever the change is, I mean, that's kind of the landscape that we're in right now. So. You know, I mean, I can't say that it was totally unforeseen. Um, it's unfortunate. Obviously, you want everybody to stay. Um, every one of those kids, we 100% we talked to, tried to keep them here, talked to them about staying. Um, and they all decided to move on for various reasons. And, and, you know, I mean, listen, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they feel is best for them. Those kids have been phenomenal ambassadors of our program and what we've asked them to do. Um, and. You know, and I don't say this in a negative way, but anybody that doesn't want to be here for whatever reason, and I'm not saying that some of them aren't valid, then we'll, we'll have people that want to be here and want to be a part of this. Um, I told the coaching staff the same thing. You know, look, guys, if y'all want to move on and go find something else, go ahead. If you want to stay, then let's stay and let's do it. So, you know, for us, that's just the way we're going to handle it. Uh, you know, I mean, everybody's going through it. So you can have the poor me's and feel sorry for yourself, or you can get the next guy ready to play. And um, that's what we're going to do. We, we believe in developing guys. We always have. And that's certainly not going to change. Um, to answer your question about going into the portal, you know, I, I believe if you live by the portal, you'll die by it. Um, obviously, when there are needs that need to be addressed, you'll go out there and you'll go address some of them. Um, you know, for us looking at it right now as a staff, the only position we feel like probably needs some guys, one or two possibly, um, would be at the offensive line for spring practice to get to get to have a good spring practice. We have a couple of guys that are still banged up. Um, so that would probably be the only spot that I anticipate us doing that. We're not, I mean, we're not in panic mode. We're not, you know, we're not going through the portal every day to see who hits. I mean, that's just, that's not the way we're going to do it. So, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be ready to go. We got plenty on this roster to go out there and go do what we want to do. And um, in the long run, it'll just make it better in the end. Having said that, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to, to leave. So is there a cutoff in your mind where you would say, you know, this gossip isn't available anymore without maybe giving too much away? Is it like mentally do you, do you think about that to say, okay, this is the date where, you know, this guy decided to come back no matter who it is, if there's the point of no return? Or is that something that's just the door is closed? See you later. 
I don't want to go into too much detail of that. Um, but as a program, um, naturally, as I think everyone can understand, you can't just say, hey, guys, doors open, go see what's out there. Um, so we have some systems in place that we've discussed with all the guys. They know before they go into the portal um, what our policy is. Um, but no, I don't anticipate any of them coming back. So what, what is the policy? I'm not going into the policy. And then you talked about not, you know, not going, looking at the portal a lot and so forth, but how does that work for y'all? Is there somebody that, you know, just, at, you know, is that a part of the daily routine for somebody to say, to see if a familiar name, you know, pops up in there or somebody you're familiar with or, I mean, how, how does it, you know, I know it's, it's a completely different world out there. Well, some places do have people that that's what they do every day. Um, and I know that, you know, to be factual. Um, that's not the world we're going to live in. Um, when there's a position of need, we'll go through it and we'll look. Obviously, um, you know, you don't have to look very hard to find out who's in the portal anymore. Um, it seems like people want to report on that more than they do on the good things happening in a program, to be honest with you. Um, you know, for us, I think... Um, you know, in my mind, the way I see it is if you're going to get someone out of the portal, I think you're taking a big chance when you take someone that you know nothing about, you've got no prior relationship with, um, and or you don't have people that you trust with where they're coming from. Um, so, you know, for us, you know, we're going to be really meticulous about, you know, we're not just, you know, we've never done this and we're not going to, we don't throw offers out. This place is unique and you don't create a great locker room culture you don't create those types of things that type of camaraderie by taking the wrong types of people if that makes any sense there are a lot of really good players out there and I think as a staff the thing that we've done a good job for a long time of is we made sure we got the right type of good players and um, and so you know I mean we're not gonna sit there every day wake up in the morning and let's go through this portal see what we can get today I mean you know maybe that's the way some places are gonna operate but uh, we're not gonna do that here how much co how much conversation is there between coaches uh, these guys in the portal? Can you tell me a little bit about them and vice versa, where you all communicate to kind of make sure that you're getting a kid that fits with? Well, I think there's a lot of that. Anytime you have a prior relationship, you know, we've had people that have called about our guys, and you know, I mean, what do you, you know? If you really care about the kids, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna try to help them if that's what they decide to do, and that's what we've done. Um, as much as you don't want to see them leave, you know, you've got relationships with these guys for, I mean, shoot, some of them three, four, five years now. Um, and, I mean, just because they feel like this isn't the right fit for them now, it, it doesn't change the way you feel about them. So there's a lot of that, you know, and, and for the most part, you know, people that you're friends with, that you respect, that you trust, they're going to be honest with you. You know, I mean, they're going to tell you, they're going to tell you the good and the bad that go along with it, um, you know, character you know um, play ability kind of their plan kind of and to be honest with you most of the kids will tell you the truth you know they'll tell you why they left and every one of our kids that I talked to and I talked to every single one of them before they went in they all had reasons some of them are different some of them I felt were great reasons but that's not my decision to make so um, you know you can get a lot of information from that is I mean shoot it's just like when you have a high school kid coming out and you you call the coach and you ask and you know that's the people that you trust because they've been with them so I mean there's a lot of that I mean this transfer portal thing, the, the design of it's a really good idea, right? Because for a long time, as a head coach, you had all the power. You could say, yes, you can transfer. No, you can't transfer. Or if you do, you can't go to these schools. That's not right, you know, in and of itself. Now the kids have an option to go out and do that. And I think as a coach, you can try to talk to them about what they think is important. And you can try to talk to them about the plans you have for them. But at the end of the day, um, you know, they do have an option. And I, I mean, you know, I mean, all of us have choice in the jobs that we choose. Um, so for a kid, I mean, you know, if they think something's better out there for them, then, you know, I mean, they, they can go out and explore it now. Coach, regarding relationships since you've been here forever, what... Um, Feels like it. Right, right. <laughs> um, what are your expectations for these guys that are having to fill those holes of the guys that have left for whatever reason they left for? Shoot, I mean, it's a great opportunity for so many people, right? Um, you got a lot of guys that have been, you know, maybe maybe backups um, or played alongside with them that, you know, maybe a leadership role was shared. Um, now the leadership role grows for some guys that get an opportunity to lead and, and to take to take this team under their wing and kind of put their stamp on it. You know, at the end of the day, it's the player's team. 
Um, and I think every coach will tell you that the best teams are all player led, and our teams have been player led. So you got a lot of guys that get opportunity to uh, to to lead, to step up and grow in that role. And then, truthfully, you got a lot of young players that are, I mean, shoot, they're excited. They got a little bit of new life because they see an opportunity. So, you know, I mean, we as a staff, we've never been more excited about it. You know, I mean, I think when you're competitive, I think having a challenge is what excites you. Um, and, you know, this, you know, obviously presents a challenge when you lose good players like we did and good people like we did. Um, but it just kind of it kind of excites you a little bit because you say, man, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of new moving parts out there. It'll be fun to go out there and go see who competes, who rises to the occasion. Um, you know what I mean? That's that's kind of our message is let's go attack this thing. Let's go do it again. And maybe it'll be with a couple of different people, but it doesn't make it any different. No reason it can't be the same. On that note, you mentioned that you guys are bringing some more guys in the offensive line. How would you assess the depth of the running back position since you lost a couple guys there? Well, you know, at, in the offensive line, the depth is good there. Um, so I don't want to say it like that. We have some guys that are still banged up from off-season surgeries and stuff too. So, you know, that stuff plays into it. Uh, in the running back room, you know, we signed four guys last year that all at some point, you know, in fall camp, you know, and obviously Terrence Williams played a little bit this year. But, you know, Kendro and Dre Washington – I mean, there was times last year in fall camp where you're like, hmm, like, you know, these, these guys can do it too here. So um, the depth is really good. You got Chris Smith, who's a leader, um, who's proven, who's done a great job. Um, his leadership role gets to grow. Um, it's something that I believe he's excited about. Um, you know, and, and so you got some young guys in there that are going to be hungry and they'll be thirsty to go out there and go play and go do it. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see them compete because there were times, like I said, last year in fall camp that you sat around and you was like, well, you know, you know these these guys can do it. You know, kind of. It, we knew it was going to be fun to see who ended up kind of taking that third spot. So, so it's something that we're excited about. Um, you know, and we'll get to we'll get to see those guys in action here soon enough. What, which of your December signees are coming in early, and, have you, and and which of the guys that we talked about in December went through senior day by the change their mind? So early signees. Um, we have three guys that will be here mid-year. Um, we've got uh, Zion Chris, quarterback um, from Madison Prep, which obviously for a quarterback it's huge uh, to get in here and to be here. Um, Marcus Weiser, um, the junior college D lineman, um, which will be really good for him to get in here and get his feet wet and come compete. And then you've got Caleb Edwards also, who uh, the linebacker from West St. John. Their, their mid-year graduation or mid-year commencement has got pushed back a little bit. Um, because of the hurricanes down there, but he will be here at mid-year. Um, won't be in the team meeting yet, but he will be here. So those three guys will be here, um, which it's nothing but a good thing when you get those young guys in. Um, and then, I'm sorry, what was your second question uh, there? Uh, senior, senior day guys, you might have changed their mind. Got you. Um, none of them. Um, you know, they've gone through senior day. Um, you know, it wasn't a – it wasn't us. I, I shouldn't say none, I'm sorry. David Hudson. David Hudson's going to come back. So he's a guy that we – we recruited to come back. Um, I love David Hudson um, and everything that that guy stands for. So he's going to come back, which will be a good one for us. Um, you know, and, and David has played really good football for us. And um, you know, he's one of those guys that's a little banged up coming out the season, but uh, we're, we're we're fired up to have David coming back. So the rest of them, though, they they've walked and they've gone on, and you know, I mean, they've they've done a lot for our program. So you know, it's uh, we're we're appreciative, you know, of everything they've done. Yes. Okay. Yep. How important is this off-season period, upcoming spring practice, given you guys are going to obviously have a change in the guard at quarterback? Well, you know, I mean, the off-season is important every year. Um, you know, I, I believe, and I've felt this way forever, that the work you do in the off-season is what sets the stage for the season. Um, and we have a team that uh, – that works incredibly hard. You know, our motivation last year was the conference championship game. You know, when we got off the when we got in there, you know, for our our off season program, you could tell that there was a little motivation. There was an edge. Um, you know, I see the changes. You know, with myself, with the coaching staff, with players that are not here, um, whether they've graduated or transferred, I see that being a motivation piece for us as well. Um, you know, I think in quarterback, you know. Everyone loves a quarterback battle, right? I mean, you know, that's the talk of every program everywhere when they have one. So that's always something that, you know, people kind of – people love and they love to see, um, which I think, you know, is good. I think it, it – I think the whole team has to play a little bit better whenever you have a quarterback transition going on. You know, sometimes you get comfortable having a guy 
like Levi, who's done it for so long and done it so well, um, you know, everybody gets to step up their game a little bit. So it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be good for us. Um, you know, but obviously the work done now between now and spring ball is important for the whole crew. And you just mentioned the challenges of what you're saying about, you know, dealing with the transfers and whatnot. So what's your message to fans that, you know, maybe say after this season, you know, this is the peak of this program. What's your message to them as a new coach saying, we can do it again, we can run it back, and we can possibly be even better? I mean, just give us a chance to do it. You know, we're going to work in the off season. We're going to go out there and we're going to put a great team together and we're going to go out there and we will go do it again. So, you know, just – you know, give us a chance to do it. You know, every off season has its questions. You said Mike, you about your a, a situation where obviously not only with the transfer portal, but some coaches, some position coaches left, and you replaced them. But there were quite a few quality control people, whether they were analysts or uh, recruiting people mm -hmm. or whatever it was, who wound up leaving as well. How is uh, how is the, the replacing them how is that coming along and, and how far are you along and with it right now Oh, that's coming along well. You know, um, you know, we're probably seventy percent of the way done with that. Um, you know, naturally, you're gonna you're gonna do the full time positions first, um, and then you go from there. And and my thing is, I wanted, I want the full time guys to have some say in who they're gonna be working with, because um, that's a really close relationship. Um, you know, Matt Bergeron worked with me for the last two years. Um, that's why I knew the guy was ready for a full-time job, right? I've seen him work the last two years. I've seen the work he's done for me with our players. Um, I've seen the way he's carried himself. So, you know, that position, when someone's working right alongside of you, the trust there has to be, you know, undoubted. Um, and so I want guys to have people that they feel really confident in. I mean, obviously I'm, you know, a big part of the equation in the final say of it. But, um, you know, once we got all these people in place, we kind of went through it and said, well, look, these are a list of guys that we've got. Let's talk to these people. Let's do some digging. And, uh, you know, you try to put the pieces together where they fit. I mean, there's a lot of good coaches out there. I mean, you're talking about quality control or position on the field, whatever. There's tons of great coaches out there. But the whole thing has to kind of fit together a little bit. Personalities, uh, strengths, weaknesses, all those things. So it's coming together well. What role? Does Coach Vietor and Coach Lajay going to have under your uh, under, under you? So we're gonna uh, we're gonna announce any changes that we had, and we're gonna even put out all the coaches who who have stayed, kind of their positions, which most of them haven't changed, you know. Uh, but Coach Lajay is going to be our offensive coordinator, recruiting coordinator, um, you know, which he's done the recruiting coordinator piece before. Um, I think he'll have a big. He, I know he'll have a bigger role in it now. Um, as the coordinator piece goes, he's really really. Coach Leger is really good at, at organizing the offense and grouping things together and the way that we install it, the way that we teach it, the way we do those things. So I'm excited to see him um, kind of get his hands on it. And I think there's, you know, some better ways we can do some things, the way we teach it, the way we install it. Um, you know, Coach Viator for me, um, I mean, that's, that's invaluable. Uh, just to be quite honest with you, uh, to have his experience. I mean, he's been a head coach for a number of years. He's done a phenomenal job everywhere he's been. Um, he's going to help me with the quarterbacks as well, um, you know, kind of in that room. Um, but I just think his day-to-day -day value is through the roof. You know, last year he was really good for us getting ready for this bowl game. He was instrumental in preparing that plan, getting it together. You know, he's one of those guys that you can have looking ahead to the next opponent. And by the time you get to Sunday to the game week, You've got a pretty solid game plan in place already. And then from there, we tweak it, we build off of it, we add, subtract, and do those things. So Coach Viator and, and Coach Leger are guys that, on the offensive side of the ball, I mean, they're, they're huge for us um, and for me. And again, when you have people like that you can trust, it just makes it a whole lot easier. I would you to have a guy like George and Lamar were here, went somewhere else, and now coming back? Well, you know, I'd be excited if they'd been here the entire time because, you know, I've known, I mean, I've known Lamar since 2004 and as a player, um, then comes back as a coach and you just see the way he handles himself. He's always been just really intellectual and understood the game at a different level than most people. Um, you know, I think the fact that he's coached under some of the people he's coached under and been to the places he's been, um, you know, maybe for other people, it validates the hire, but I never questioned. Lamar's ability. Um, so to have him coming back, for him to choose to come back and do this with us, uh, you know, I'm thrilled about, you know. And then Coach Munoz, I mean, you know, my senior year, if you just look statistically, 
I was a way better player my senior year than I ever was before that. And I mean, it's because of him. I didn't change as a player. You know, I didn't, you know, none of those things changed about me. It was the way that he prepared me, the way that he taught the concepts, the way that he understands the game. And then, you know, he leaves here and he goes on. He's part of one of the best offenses, but one of the best teams in the history of college football. Um, then he goes, you know, over to Baylor and has a receiver that has phenomenal numbers and has continued to play really well. You know, so again, to other people, maybe it validates it. But to me, I've, I've been sold on those guys for a decade. Um, and, you know, I mean, Coach Munoz, to me, means the world to me. He's the reason I have it. He's the reason I'm here right now. Um, so to be able to bring him back in the mix and to have him so willingly jump in and take the role, uh, that, that, that means everything, to be honest with you. Um, he's a guy, those guys are guys that you can trust. They are loyal to the end. Um, they're great football coaches. They're better human beings. Um, you know, when you talk about relationships, that's, I mean, they're home runs. Does that trust that you want to have with them because of the prior relationships? Is that going to help you with this transition to becoming the head coach? Well, right. I mean, I think, you know, you got a room full of people that you trust, that you believe in. Everybody believes in each other, that we're all doing it for the right reasons together. It makes everything a lot easier. And, uh, you know, we got a room full of guys that, that I know are all ready to go out there and go do this thing together. And, you know, the things that you go through together that are difficult make you closer. And, uh, you know, Everyone has challenges, right? I mean, I say it all the time. There's no such thing as a perfect season. You can go undefeated, win the national championship. You're going to have difficulties along the way. You're going to have challenges along the way. Um, you know, and all the things that you go through, they just make it better in the end. So, I mean, those guys, we've been through a lot. And, you know, there's no doubt that that will help. Coach, you talked about Zeon Chris being an uh, early enrollee for you guys. And I remember on national side in the early signing period, you said he had some intangibles and qualities similar to Levi Lewis. Um, just how excited are you to get him on campus and see what he can do uh, on the collegiate level? Well, I mean, I think it's very exciting. You know, uh, the more people that you have in a competition, the better it is. Um, you know, and I think Zion is a viable option coming in here as a freshman out of high school. Um, just talent-wise, he's really good. He's very cerebral. Um, you know, he's a really good fit in that quarterback room. He fits in well with those guys. So, you know, I mean, to have him here is huge. Um, you know, but they got a bunch of guys in that room that are going to be able to compete for this thing, and they're going to have an opportunity to do it. And, uh, you know, like I said, the more people you have, the better option that you have in the end. Okay, hey, we're going to go Kevin, we're going to go Tim, and we'll be done, all right? Coach Jamal Bell is he back? Is yes, Jamal is back. I don't. Did Jamal walk? He was on senior day. He was on. Okay. All right. Yes. I'm sorry. Then yes, Jamal is also coming back. He uh, towards the end of it, he decided that he wanted to come back. Okay. And I know you don't probably worry about the outside world, but because of the uniqueness of everything going with Coach Napier leaving, and how concerned are you about just in the court of public opinion, the transfers and all the assumptions and the tweets and everything? How, how have you dealt with all that? I mean, you know, you can't really concern yourselves. You can't concern yourself with the opinions of people that don't really know what's going on. Um, the people that matter are the people in that building right there that know what's really going on. Um, I understand, you know, fans make the, make the game go. Don't get me wrong. And, uh, I mean, I understand people having opinions and feeling certain ways. But, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's not really about any of that. You know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is you just got to ignore the noise. Good or bad, doesn't matter. It's that's It doesn't affect the things that happen day to day. So, you know, it's about what's going on in that building. Um, and we all believe what's about to happen. We all believe in the things that we have in place to make it work. So, you know, I mean, other people can have opinions. That's fine. I mean, that's, that's the nature of it. You know, social media makes it to the point where everyone's got an opinion. Uh, but, you know, I mean, to say we're worried about it would certainly not be the case. Speaking of social media, I'm, I'm curious what what you intended or what the message was with your tweet about um, loyalty and related to that, or maybe separate, I don't know. Do you think the right to go into the portal without having their loyalty questioned, especially since coaches can leave on a whim even if they're under contract at any time, and it's really not like in the old days, a, you know, a four-year ride in a lot of these sports, maybe, maybe more baseball, softball, basketball, the football, but it's more of a renew after one year thing, so it's not really a, a four-year commitment like it used to be. Well, I mean, you know, 
to answer short answer yeah i do think that people have should have the right to have free will and what they want to do um no i mean it doesn't necessarily question loyalty i mean there's a lot of reasons there's a lot of reasons why people feel like it's time to change and not a single one of those kids who have come to me about it had anything to do with loyalty um some reasons are good some reasons are not um and i'm not going to get into all that but at the end of the day if a kid feels strongly enough that this is not the place for them then they need to go um no one deserves to be in a place where they're unhappy no one deserves to have to be stuck in a place where they have you know little hope of what's going to happen and you know i mean i don't question loyalty as far as that goes um you know sometimes you question decision making and things like that because you know you're stepping to a big unknown um but at the end of the day i mean that's kind of what life's about right when you take chances and you do new things there are a lot of unknowns about it and you know when when people feel like it's time to do something well then they have the right to do that the, the tweet then what was the what was the message behind that well, which the, i've tweeted a lot of things last week yeah um it was integrity Integrity. Integrity. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, well, integrity is our first is the first pillar of our program, um, and it was a definition strictly, you know, straight from the, you know, definition of what integrity is. And I mean, listen, everything that we do here is going to be done with integrity. Some other people may or may not do it. That's not anything to do with us. That's the first pillar of what our program is about, and integrity goes along with honesty and truthfulness and doing what you say you're going to do, and that's what we're going to do. So, you know, again, kind of go back to what Kevin said, you know, people read in a whole lot of things on the Internet, and that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to go in there and clear myself up. I don't really care. Um, but our guys know we're going to do things the right way. Our coaches, our players, we're going to treat them the right way. We're going to do what we say we're going to do, and we're going to say the things that we mean. And if you don't build a program or a business or anything off of integrity, then it's not going to stand. It's not going to last. So the first thing that we're going to do, that's the first pillar of what we have as a program, that we're going to do everything that we do with integrity. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thanks. Yep.